All right, so let's let's pick up a couple of these points, continuing on this point um, concerning um, hair hair exemption. Now, why do I call it concerning hair exemption? Hair exemption. It's it's a, it's a continuation of the reasoning because that was a good um, a good object lesson. What would be called and considered to be a um, a good object lesson as far as that like, Gloria Allwright, We the People clip, because in our organization, on our foundation, is we, the black people of the world. We, the black people of the world. Now, of course, that's found in the that's found in the um, preamble of the Constitution that was promulgated August um, 25th, 1937 of this particular organization, the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. All right, and, and here we want to heal up um, Empire, Empire Works, Empire Works, Dot com. Why don't you check out our brotherman and his ministry and those who are on that particular front line, HempireWorks.com. We're going to hopefully talk a little bit more about it. There's a, there's a radio show clip, um, a must check out. Check out the um, Shashimani, uh, um, the Trans uh, National Project and everything that's going on. Um, at that particular site and that we are very supportive of because it's basically overstanding the foundation that we speak of and it's building on I and I divine heritage, especially as Afro American Rastafari. So it's one of the Rasta uh, Farai from the Afro American from us Judah I spearheading that particular issue concerning um Kana also concerning, um, generally speaking, marijuana, generally speaking, marijuana. But I love what the brother in says in the way that he articulates it, um, Ross Gerard, when he says, um, he said that we don't promote, um, we don't promote, um, drug addiction, we don't promote weed, you know, this weed thing as Rastafari, and that's one of the confusions, too, and it's not going to go anywhere. You know, this, this popular stereotype against us as um, Rastafari. In fact, there's a vid out there. Um, we're probably not going to post it here again, but it's about um, um, the dreadlock drug mule. If you look up dreadlock drug mule, you might have already seen it already, what's going on around the world. So we see how we're being slandered um, and defamed, our good name, on the international, on the international or the global, speaking on the global level. Now, the scripture tells us that a, a, a good name is rather to be chosen. No doubt, any and all or most of you all as Rastafari have chosen, in order to say accepted and chosen, Rastafari. So you've chosen a good name. But what is in a name? What's the meaning of the name? This is what is very important for us to 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 learn, you understand, and then also to implement what is good about it. Once we learn about it and weigh and balance it. So in this clip that we posted and this continuation of this particular issue, and we're just using that particular example. You understand? That's, that's an example. That's an object lesson. It's not about that particular Rasta man's personality. It's not a personal issue. It's a principle issue because there's many ones and ones who are ignorant to it. So they also are walking into courts of law, and you know, and and, and it's a whole. There's a whole um, matrix, in a sense, connected with it, as we said. When you walk into a court, first of all, you're walking into a what? You're walking into a square, right? You're walking into a square when you walk into the court, right? It's just like the courts of our God. 
It's like the court of the Lord. You're walking with this. We're now in the tabernacle, right? And we're studying the tabernacle in these Torah portions. We have this particular structure right here, which is another square. A square in a square. This square is broken into two parts, right? And here we have the holy place or the Ark of the Covenant. And then here we have some of the, um, the furniture right here. And this is known as the most holy. And then the gates are like right here. And then outside we have uh, the, the brazen laver. And then we have the brazen altar right here. Right? The brazen altar right here. Let's just make it go straight up. Brazen altar, right? And then we have the gates. The gates right here. And the 12 tribes, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three. Now it's interesting that at this point right here, right, at this point, now what's the direction? Let's understand the direction. This will be, this will be east, right? This will be west, right? This will be north, right? And this will be south. We can draw a cross right here. You can see how the cross and fit in right here, right, the cross. All right, now, the east, this is the east, so the sun rises, it says, in the east, right? So when we are worshiping in the tabernacle sense, right, in according to the scripture, we're not worshiping the sun, notice, our back is to the sun. Our back is to the sun because we are the representative you have of that symbol right there, even with the rays, even with the locks, the rays, all right? Now, here is the tribe of Judah. The tribe of Judah is at this particular position right here, at the, at the gate, at the entrance. It's similar to when we look at the lion of the tribe of Judah symbology. You ever take a look at the lion of the tribe of Judah symbology? Let's see if we have it here, the lion of the tribe of Judah symbology or, or the arma, the personal, um, the personal um, insignia of his imperial majesty, and we have it in some of the, some of the books. In fact, it's, it's, it's in the forward of, I think, all of the books. Let's actually bring this book up right, bring this book up right here. It should be right here in the first, well, actually, in this one we have, oh, no, no, it's right there. My bad. So, this is not a really clear picture right here. Or you might not get a clear view of it. Or maybe you will. Alright, so you see that right there, the line of Judas in the front. Then we have the two angels side the throne. Then we have the throne. And in the clearer detail, there's much more symbolic representation. That's the view right there into the holy place. That is the view into the holy place. That's the very same view into the holy place as we have in the tabernacle, um, the schismatic, or the schema of the tabernacle, right? This particular area right here, the tabernacle. Now, it's important, it's important to understand this, right? It's important to understand this, even in a legal way, and especially in a legal way. Because what is the highest law on the face of this earth? What's the highest law on the face of this earth? Basically, it's Torah. The highest law on the face of this earth is the Torah in the Moshiach. Right? The Torah in the Moshiach. You understand? Know in Yeshua HaMoshiach. It's the, the law of life in Christ. Christ did not do away with or destroy the law. He came to fulfill it or to perfect it. But in the world, we have a defective a defective form of law, but it still is referential. Its, it's, its power is referential to the principles of Torah, to the principle of what we call the Torah. And this goes beyond just a so-called Jewish, in that sense, issue. You understand? Because we are Judahites as well, because after all, Moa and Bessa the Im Negeda Yehuda, or the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. But there's a verse I want to begin off right here.
because this is a subject matter that we've touched on elsewhere or on another using other examples and it's important for us to also understand how it's how it's represented or misrepresented even in these um, in these cases right here so now it says that um, in Psalm let's go to the Psalm for a moment it says that um, I think it's 36 and is it 36 and 4 36 and 4 let's turn our scriptures to Psalm 36 verse 4 get yourself a good concordance that's one thing we really advise a good concordance so you can look up certain key words because you might hear ones and ones myself or others um, you know you might hear okay that's another form of mischief right there um, I'm looking up mischief the key word is mischief where it says that they uh, devise um, 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 mischief right they devise mischief by a law by a law they devise mischief by a law what it's really teaching us is a certain a certain a certain um, principle right a certain principle that based on law and the ignorance of law they can devise mischief you see there's a purpose and there's a role for law the scripture tells us what the role for law is even as Christian and especially as Christian because Christians are noticing that a lot of their rights are being violated by manipulation of law and those European and other Christians who understand what it's really about they are the only ones who are able to in a sense keep certain religious rights in effect if you see the real big the real big picture the real big picture that's going on um, let's see right here okay um, frame it frame it not divide it 94 and 20 94 and 20 94 and um, 94 and um, 20 94 and 20 so Psalm 9 4 and 20 I met the teacher on this before and I, I think I might have mentioned it um, previously but 94 and 20 says this right here Post it, post it, no. It says, Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by a law? Shall the throne of iniquity. Now, this, this now also talk, speaks on the whole monarchist and divine right to rule and kingship issue, and at the, at the heart of it, Right at the heart of it is this is this um, um, battle between the sons of God, the sons of light, the sons of truth, and the sons of Cain, the sons of the devil, the sons of of, of the lie. You understand, or the enemy, or between Christ and anti-Christ. You understand, and the law plays a significant role in who is claiming the right who has the right you know, so when we speak in this point about rights you see most folks think that it's a bunch of senators that you elect you understand or you don't elect or who are elected that basically make the laws and in fact um, Pat Robinson and I often don't reference him but it's kind of interesting here he has an interesting theory about Pat Robinson it's called nation of criminals Basically, what they're saying is that the law and the legal system and, and people getting arrested and the whole prison industrial complex is going crazy. And this week, I think he's featuring that on his um, um, television, CBN station. But if you go to his website, you understand you can check it out. Now, I know some folks may not like him or what he's about, so and so on. But to the brothers and sisters who are born again, you understand. The Holy Spirit protects you and teaches you how to behave, and you know um, you shouldn't have uh, aversion to finding out the truth, no matter wherever it might be. You know, so check out Pat Robinson, CBN's um, Nation of Criminals, which is an example 
of what is going on, how people are going to jail and getting arrested and going to jail because of this mischief that we're speaking of right here. It says, show the throne of iniquity. And that word iniquity refers to the Amitah, the Amitah. The Amitah is the rebellion. Show the rebellion have fellowship. Fellowship. Remember what we said? We're supposed to help one. You know what I'm saying? We're supposed to have two Rastafari. We're supposed to, in that sense, win souls for Christ and his kingly character. We're supposed to do that. If you hear one saying that we're not supposed to do that, that is not the good news. That's not the teaching of Hala Salasi. You see, even amongst us, and especially amongst us, just like there were Christians, but then the Christians were warned about the anti Christians or the anti Christ and the ones who will creep in amongst ones and ones and not have the teaching of Christ to undermine the work of God because that's what it's all about to undermine the work of God and at this present point in time we see that the Rastafari, the, the movement that we have been undermined or compromised you know saying we have been compromised like the difference between um, justice and righteousness or judgment and, and righteousness and the whole peace and love trip you understand that we, we, we've touched on that from some of the earlier vids and postings that we did over the past couple of uh, years. But it says, so they have fellowship with thee. So they're not our fellows. They're not our friends even. You see, could we minister to ones in the world or even read of ones? Only with ones is a fellow, one has to be a brother or a sister, has to seek to do the will of our Father. Therefore, they have to know our Father. They have to know His, His Word. You understand? And then we can, you know, we have to try every spirit to see if they are of, are they of God. The Bible says this, that um, it says that um, the world hears them. These other folks who speak worldly, the world agrees with them. So you have some Rastas who are in full uh, complicity and agreement with the evil world. You understand? Even in an innocent or rather an ignorant sense. In an ignorant sense. But there's a bigger picture to this. It's like a setup. It's like the whole thing's the frog. The frog in the boiling water. And turning up the pot incrementally. Little by little by little. And before you know it, the frog is cooked. You understand? So it's not a overt attack. It is a covert attack. You understand? So it says right here, show the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, with the Most High, with the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, our Master and Redeemer, our Adonai and our Redeemer, Yeshua HaMashiach. Shall they have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by a law? This throne of iniquity, this other throne, this other monarchy, understand, in the world has framed iniquity has framed the rebellion against our God Father, against Kedamawi, Haila, Selassie, and against that stone, against the foundation of that kingdom of God and Christ in the earth. You understand? Because he sits on the throne of David. The Bible says the throne of David will never lack a man to sit on the throne. This is real. You understand? A lot of folks are ignorant. You know what I'm saying? But for those of you who know the truth, we must be able to defend the truth and live within the truth. Now, the point about religion, now we pointed this out for, for a, partic a few particular points right here in the tabernacle. Why is the tabernacle so important? Well, Judah stands here. That's why when you look at his majesty's, um, his, 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 his personal arma, you know what I'm saying? Or his personal insignia with the throne room. You'll see that in the throne room symbology, it's the curtains are open. Remember, there are, there are curtains both here, right, at the entry to the courtyard. And there are curtains right here, entry into the Mishkan or the Dinquan, right? Dinquan, Bamarinya, you know what I'm saying? In the Mark and Mishkan in the Ibrahist Kwangwa or in the in the Lasana uh, Ibri Ibrahist, right? And that's the Hebrew in the biblical Hebrew, 
right? Now, um, in the Gutters, it's called a, a Debta, or some say Debtera. The Debtera, the Debta is the tabernacle. Now, that's also very important on the whole Debtera issue, which is a related, it's a related issue, but it's more in looking at Ethiopia and, and, and the persecution of the Debtera and a lot of the confusion that has been caused since this particular iniquity has been, this form of iniquity has, has, has framed mischief, right, by a law. That's the key phrase. Framing of mischief. In other words, doing deeds that are ungodly and, ver and illegal, really, but using the law, really, using the ignorance and the waving of one's rights. That's what we said about the Rastafari or the Rasta brethren, right, that um, basically took off his uh, tan or his hat. He, he, he did not check. He, 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 the first place is when the judge said it was a hat. It was not like this. It was, it was, it was a tan. Sh shall we make a demonstration? I think it's necessary to make a... Let's make a demonstration. This right here is a tan. This is a tan, right? This is a tan. This is a hat. This is a tan or a crown, or you could say basically it's a head covering. Both of them are head covering, but this is more properly what is known as a hat. You understand? See, in law, things are defined by the words. And anyone who has studied law or knows anyone who has studied law, you know that words, they, sometimes they go all the way back to the Latin. They go back to the Latin to prove or disprove something when they are um, defending or arguing for a certain position or a certain case or a certain client. They will go into the, the definition of, of, of the word. You know, and the various different uses and say, okay, Your Honor, I'm using this word according to such and such, or so I'm even bringing the Webster's Dictionary. Now, in a lot of these cases that we see going on, it doesn't have to go to that level because people have waived so many of their rights. So it has built up a certain um, precedent of what they call case law. This is, this, this is what um, I wanted to put up here and touch on case, right, what's called case law. There's an interesting video. It's actually, I think, the video. It's out there on the on the tubes, and I think we have a, a studyable a studyable copy. It's called Case. Well, it's not called Case Law, but in the, it's a Megiddo Part Two um, video. I think it is there that they touch on Case Law, where they speak on Case Law, and in speaking on Case Law, they basically show how this has come about. And how is it's a really, it def, it, it's a definition or it can help to define what the scriptures here says in 94, um, Psalm 94 and 20 as framing mischief, framing mischief by a law. This is why the judge clarified. So the first place is that if one says your hat and you have a tan, you have a tan on, you have to say, or you should say, because we're honorable, we can show honor as well, as long as we're not being dishonored. You know, we have to open the example of His Majesty and seek to perfect it. And practice makes perfect. You understand? So every day, you understand? Um, your honor, it's not a, it's, it's a... What I have on my head is, is not a hat. It is a tam. You understand? It is a head covering or it's my religious head cover. She, he didn't have to mention culture. And in fact, it, it might be better not on a certain level to mention culture if you look at how culture now is being used by the pseudo new ages and everybody else more effectively than really I and I. In fact, they're trying to um, um, degrade you know what I'm saying, or even devolve our public our public public um, um, persona of Rasta or Rastafari, you know, they're trying to degrade that to a cult status, a cult status. 
Because see, once it comes, it hasn't reached that yet. Because there's many of I and I who are seeking to defend Ras Tafari and to teach others the teaching of His Majesty. So on the national and local and even the international level, there are many who are doing the will of our Father, at least to an extent that has prevent, prevented them from really fully, you understand, know um, doing to us you know, the evils that the devil, their master, has in mind. Because they have not submitted. See, that's, that's, that's another throne. That's another throne that they, that they serve. So, shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with those who defend Christ and his kingly character? We're not fellows. You understand? Then you have to overstand, well, fellows mean brethren. You understand? Fellows mean brethren. We're not of the same fraternity. We're not of that same fraternity. So when we pointed out what the brethren did, and we said, so-called Rasta, I say so-called, because most likely he falls into that general Rasta group. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of you all might have heard it, but still is doing the Rasta. Don't know that there's a difference. And see, it takes you a while. Once you recognize that you still might, um, out of force of habit, you might say Rasta, but when you really now know better to say Rastafari. Just correct it. That's what we mean by word, sound, and power. Word, sound, and power. So if he checked her, checked the judge, and when, when the judge said hat, and he had an opportunity to speak, and he kind of spoke over the judge, or he was speaking while the judge was speaking, that also is, 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 it shows a lack of discipline, a lack of discipline of the mind, even getting emotional in those sort of situations, because you can't really size up what's really going on. And therefore, then they don't have to treat you with, with certain honor and right because you have demonstrated on the square and in the square that, like, you're almost like a wild animal, in a sense. I'm, I'm, I'm saying, like, to those cases where you see, you know, um, NBCs, you know, a lot of the Negroes, blacks, and colored ones who fall under that artificial um, 13th and 14th um, Amendment status. See, see, so you have to understand how it's all connected. So when we have Rastafari, say natural. See, it's only natural for one to have a religion. You see, the difference between spirituality and religion is interesting. And, and his majesty teaches us that. But he does not say that we should say we don't have no religion. It's just a lot of folks that have done that because of their elementary school education that has taught them quite correctly that religion from the Latin means religio, religio means to tie back, it can mean to tie back with a certain tradition, it can mean to also tie back as to lock down ones in a certain ritualized, like institutional, so-called religious um, activities like we see a lot in the world. So therefore, Rastafari, quite correctly, we have said to ones and ones that we're not a religion but we did not say in the sense that these ones are religion. We are a way of life. But we do have religious, we have religious rights. And I give thanks to, I think it was Lion, was it Lion? Lion male, Lion King, one, one of the handles where one had basically gave their own testimony. And there's somebody out there that's been spamming, you know, I, I guess bad spamming, I was trying to spam our videos and spam, you know, um, you know, flag the videos and spam different comments, and we look through the whole comment, and we've seen this in a couple of other examples. So, so look out for it, brothers and sisters. And if you're doing it, just be on notice. We want you to be on notice if you if you're doing this sort of nonsense. You know, be on um, be on notice about it because you know, John. You know, John doesn't love evil. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't love. Evil. Some people say God don't love ugly, but that's subjective. Babylon looked very pretty and beautiful, but is very, very wicked and ugly, in other words. Now, this case law thing in the Megiddo, in the Megiddo part two, um, I'll leave it. I'll leave it up to y'all to check that out. Those who really want to get into this a little bit more, but we mentioned it as precedent. Now, he said a couple of interesting things concerning Rastafari. And let us put this right here. So what is uh, Ras the far right, right? What is Ras the far right question? And do you recognize this? 
Like, do you recognize this right here? Alain Teferi. You know, this, this is for the mature. This is what, what we should have already grown up. This, this is the basic daraja, the basic level that we have to reach, especially those of us who are older ones, whether our family people, our children, or, you know, it's not to blame the elders, but, but John already shows us from his word, you know, it is what it is. You understand? But we still have a choice in it is what it is. You understand? We can make our wills obedient to the good influences of he who is who he is. Now, is it a, some would say, a culture? Right? Is Rastafari a culture? Or is it cultural? Is it cultural? Does it have a cultural aspect? Is Rastafari, we say, a spirituality? Right? A spirituality? How do we define this spirituality? But what about the big word? What about the word where Prince Charles Emmanuel, he said, um, whenever you see the R, it's for righteousness. Glad we agree definitely, because Rastafari begins with the R, you know, or the yeah. Um, but the religion point, religion. Now, with that little clip there from Gloria Allwright's show, um, her We the People show, what it told us, what it demonstrated to us was very interesting. It demonstrated a, a few things. It both demonstrated what we often would do if we are not put on awareness, if we are not trained, if we're not made aware of it, or if we just have to choose whatever at the moment, you know, you understand? Um, we usually would say culture. It's our culture. So when ones and ones, if you're working on a particular job or a particular occupation among the Gentiles and you have your locks and you probably have your head covering, many people have been told to shave their locks, to cut their locks, to trim their locks. And a lot of these people who may talk about spirituality shows how weak their spirituality is. You know what I'm saying? Because obviously your spirituality doesn't connect with the true spirit of God in Christ because God in Christ will give you the wisdom. That's why it says we are to be wise as serpents, harmless as doves, and recognizing that within the sense of religion and religious rights, we have right before law. You know what I'm saying? We have certain right before law. That don't mean we can do anything we want. Don't, don't, don't take this, this grace, you understand, of, 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 of God, you know, for, for wickedness or foolishness. You know, because some folks will say, oh, word, you mean if you're sovereign, you don't have to do that. Being sovereign doesn't mean being lazy. In fact, being sovereign means you have to be diligent. A lot of folks will see the same clip and won't pick up on it. They won't pick up on it. But I'm sure, because I've been among these ones like the Gloria All Rights and the rest of them in some of my previous work, even with the United Nations and different Federalist type of societies, and I sat down, like on the side, listening to these ones reason, you know, and they pick up on those little things. Oh, did you see that show, the such and such? I'll show you a clip of it. You know, they, they'll reason on these. Or in that article, such and such, I would have said it should be like this. And they'll argue on these things. And, um... You get wise to things. And you say, well, well, how does that connect with money? Well, notice, some people speak about having a job, right, a job. Some people speak about their work, their occupation. Some people speak about their profession. Some people speak about their business or industry. You understand? And some people just talk about making papers, and they don't even have a factory. Notice that. You want to make papers have a factory. I'm not talking about enslaving people in some so-called crack house or some nonsense like that because true Rastafari does not support that either. You understand? But, but we view it as an enemy, and especially since there's a lot of folks going around, you know, with the marijuana thing and little red, gold, and green, saying John, listen to reggae music, and to the Goyim, you know, the Goy, the Goy are not very wise to begin with, you know, the nations. I mean, basically, they worship false gods. So how can they be 
very wide, and so forth and so on. So, you know, the Goy believes that a lot of these um, wolves in sheep clothing for ignorant, untrained um, brothers and sisters out there. Um, I say ignorant, untrained, I'm mean, saying make a difference between those who truly were called but just did not get the upgrade. They didn't get the education. Many of us, you know, but, we, but because we keep seeking, you know what I'm saying, we keep seeking, we know that there must be more to it than what we got. And there must be a further clarification, but nobody maybe in that media circle, you know what I'm saying, can really answer or is really interested in it. So you hear a lot of folks talking about it's not a religion. Right? But is that true according to the teaching of his Imperial Majesty? Is it really true? Is Rastafari a religion? And moreover, what is religion? And connected with this all connected. How do you define religion? Do you define religion just from a Greco Roman European sense? Or do you go to a pre existing foundation? To the true foundation. Now what does the King of Kings say concerning religion? Once again we're gonna make reference to um, the gospel of him and um, we hope and pray all ones can get a copy of this to study for themselves. Um, the gospel of him, a good pocket size and we hope to have some other documents coming forward. So you can see here his majesty speaks on religion. So let's go into it for a moment. Here's the Pearl Massey speaks on, we call it true religion. True religion. Now, Bamarinya, the word usually used for religion is hymenote. 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 We have, uh, we have the book here. No, we have the book, actually. Um, it's uh, Ethiopic Grammar. It, 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 it's one of the, the study books. Um, I would, I would recommend it to all, but perhaps the basic CDELs, you understand, the basic CDELs is the first level, the Nabob Bait, the House of Reading, being able to recognize all 33 first, from Ha to Pe and their respective name. The second level is to recognize the seven primary vowel sounds and to put it, to put it all together to get the 231, because remember, there are 231 gates. Yo, Sam, 231 gates. So these are the symbolic glyphs of the 231 gates. Anyway, his majesty going to speak on religion for I and I. So if we say that I and I is Rastafari, and if we deny totally out of hand it's a religion, I know Bob said this and other ones, some of our elders said things, and many of them also said, I'm still learning. And even when Bob finally accepted, you could say, Yeshua or Jesus Christos, he was still in the process of learning. And I, I, I don't even know what that could be like, recognizing that his life, you know, he could probably feel that his life force was in, in danger at that present time, the sickness, with the so-called Nazi, neo-Nazi, whatever, doctors, blah, blah, so forth and so on. Um, and, you, and his face, you, you see it on his face, like, he had more things to say, but he didn't say it. And the whole thing about testifying to Jesus Christ, though, some would say he was becoming a, a Ethiopian Christian that was going to deny Rasta. I think he's going to deny Rasta, the Rastaisms and Schism, but affirm Rastafari, Kadamawi, Haile Selassie, Haile Selassie first, and his teaching, which are contained even right here, the good news of him, the gospel of his imperial majesty. So here's majesty says this, to make our wills obedient to good influences and to avoid evil is to show the greatest wisdom. In order to follow this aim, one must be guided by religion. Now, I know as Rastafari often say, what do we often say? We say guidance, or what do we used to say? I haven't heard ones where they say guidance. You know, we say, yes, yes, I am. Yes, right, right. Guidance, guidance and detection, like guidance and protection. Now it's like, okay, you know, like I've been in these situations where it's like, well, what is our greeting or what is our salutation or what, what do we say? You know what I mean? 
if the movement has not come to a certain type of an inertia state, then please tell me what is, and tell me what, and tell me is, and tell me what is, according to Selassian dialectics. Do you understand? Please explain to me exactly the thesis and synthesis and the synthesis of that. But as Matthew says that one must be guided by religion. Now, we've said that religion is hymenotes. Hymenotes. Right? Hymenotes. Now, to get into the fullness of that word, I'll define it simply. High or high, high as the the Hebrew or the Jewish kind of symbol you see, the high symbol, the life symbol, and Amen in its feminine plural sense, Amenot, the Amen Amenot, high Amenot, living faith is the way that it can best be understood in English. But as you study the etymology, could we study in this society the Ethiopic etymology and really get into the roots? And it's the most interesting thing to look at a word in English where you thought you had reached the fullness of its meaning in English, but still you feel that there's, there's more to it. And then when you get to the very root, you go to, the, to our divine heritage and start to look at the word and the context and in and, and the Torah and in the, the Orit and, and to compare and weigh and balance it. Then the half of the story becomes revealed. And actually what happens, you really begin to find out that, the, that, that it's really easy and simpler. You know what I'm saying? That, that the devil and the world makes it seem complicated. So some of this might seem a little complicated. It's not I and I doing. You know what I'm saying? We're trying to untangle it. We're trying to loose it to mespot, to fitaha, fitaha neges. We got, we're trying to untie it, untangle it, to loosen it so that it's open like Fatiha, Sitha, this Afro-Shemitic word that's found in the various different languages in ancient Egypt was the Pata, the Pata. But at the root of it is the father, is the father. Even with Pata from the ancient Egyptian mysteries that Mashu, Moses, was learned in, and, and he was mighty in word and in deed. Because when he spoke the word, the deed that Imare could be manifest, that Imare is a demonstration, divine demonstration. People call it miracles, but the Ethiopic word for miracles would come down to something that is, 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 is intelligent, something that is learned, something that is knowledgeable, you know, something that is done because one has the knowledge to do it. You understand? So it's not miracle in the Western um, Gentile sense. But his majesty says, in order, in order, in order, repeat that word, in order. Think about his majesty and think, in order, in order, to follow. Some man man say, I know not a follower, I can follow as a follower. Yeah, that's, that, that's the old 20th century Rastaism right there. That makes, yeah, I get it. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, we, we are continually moving forward. We're not supposed to become stuck and stagnated there. You understand? So, in the overstanding of follower and the teaching of his majesty, we are to be followers of Yeshua HaMoshiach, according to the teaching of Hala Selassie. You understand? So that means that a true Rastafari brings that Timherit, brings that doctrine. And let me show you something, another little something connected with this. Um, let us go to John, 1st John. Let's go to 1st John for a moment. New Testament, 1st John. 1st John, um, which epistle? We're going to go to, I think it's going to be uh, the 2nd epistle. The 2nd epistle um, of John. Right? And here in the Schofield is page 1326. And since you're at the bottom, we have the new, quote, law of Christ. And if you look at the, the footnote at the bottom, the new law of Christ. All right, remember, Christ did not come to destroy the law or the prophets. He didn't come to destroy Torah or the Naveen or the Nabiya. He came to fulfill it. You understand? To fulfill it. To take us out of that slavery, out of the mischief that has been done to Jah's way, truth, and life. So verse 7 says, 
and this speaks under the part two where it says that the doctrine, which is Tim Harit, which is to say the teaching, the Tim Harit, right, is the final test of reality. The final test of what is real. People say, oh, that ain't reality, or this is the reality, that's reality. No. According to the teaching of His Majesty, that the Tim Harit, the teaching, is the final test of reality for us as Ras Tefari. It is the teaching. It says in verse 7, For many deceivers are entered into the world. And who was the first one that was deceived? It was Eve. So understand how this also can adversely affect or defect our woman folk. You know, saying, all the mothers, the daughters, the sisters, the wives. Right? For deceivers are entered are entered into the world, into the world, who confess not, they do not confess, you understand, that Yeshua HaMoshiach, that Jesus Christos is come in the flesh, you know, and this is that New Ageism, schism, that's why it's Megiddo, but Megiddo, let me just put that up here, Megiddo 2, you understand, Megiddo 2, right, my, is, is it Dio or Do? Megiddo, Megiddo 2. All right, Megiddo 2. So see case law in this particular, in this particular um, video. This is the DVD that's out there, right? This is the DVD that's out there that we highly, that we highly recommend, DVD. So you can get a copy from our site or you can see uh, study copies uh, available at our site for educational use only and according to uh, fair use and you can also find it on the on the Google or the YouTubes on the internet you can see it there and they make a point about case law and how case law connects with this false religion and this false god of evolutionism now evolution is just a word but it's a word that now has become a religion you know what I'm saying but evolution in principle as a word is a good word you understand, it's a good word, but it has been used, you understand, as a, as a vessel, as almost like a carrier wave for another sort of consciousness that contradicts the gospel, the good news of His Majesty and His Christ. So, you know, be warned. Be warned. And it's through that that they have developed this whole case law idea you understand? And through that, a lot of things that we know is not morally, scientifically, according to any reality, right, has become right, and we hear them talking about rights for things that are not right, you understand? And those things that we have our rights to, by God, and even by righteous man, have been taken away from us. So how does that flip? How does that flip mode come about. We pointed to the psalm of David Mesmore, Mesmore Dawit or the Tehillim, um, 94, I think that was 20, 94 and 20 around the about, right? So here it says that they are deceivers, deceivers, they're hoodwinked, they're bamboozled, they enter into the world, and here's the sign that they don't confess that Yeshua HaMoshiach, that Jesus Christos, our black Lord and Savior, you understand? It's come in the flesh. They try to spiritualize God. So they use spirituality in a lying way. So there's a difference in the spiritualities out there. So is there an element of Rastafari that is spiritual? Or does it, we have that? Of course we do. That's part of our divine, God-given right. We were made in the image and after the like is the triune God. That's why we have spirit, soul, and body. He's the God of Abraham, the God of Yisahak, and the God of Yaakov. He's the God of the living, not the God of the dead. But now those of the dead, the shades, the shedim, the demons, the deceivers, or those who are powered by deception, they enter into the world and they don't confess that Jesus Christos, that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is why a lot of folks say, it doesn't matter what race he is. Yes, it does, because race equals seed. You can look up that word in Greek, you can look up that word in Latin, you can even look up that word in English, but people are just so ignorant in Eng English, English speakers. You know what I'm saying? So, so ignorant, they can be easily, this is where, the, this is where it's happening, all right? 
So they don't confess that Yeshua HaMoshiach is come in the flesh. Right? That, that means he has flesh and blood. He's human. And by extension, they don't confess his Ethiopian humanity. Right? As long as you say that he is Caesar Bogia, if you say that Jesus Christ is Caesar Bogia, oh, well, they confess that. They will admit that. You know what I'm saying? They don't mind that if you confess that he is blonde hair and blue eyes. And we're bringing proof. You know what I'm saying? We're representing proof from the catacombs, from the own record, from the biblical record, archaeological record. Everything presents that proof, but still. So they're under that deception. That shows you the spirit of deception. It doesn't mean that those people are demons, to say, but demons have fooled them or put them in such a cowardice state. You know what I'm saying? A fearful state that they go along, you know what I'm saying, with the devil to be comfortable and to get along. You know what I'm saying? But it's going to be bad for them in the long run or in the eternity. You know what I'm saying? In the new age, in the new world, in the new life, let's say. This is, right, to the one that don't confess that Yeshua HaMoshiach is come in the flesh. What does the Bible say? How does the Bible describe these ones? Are they okay people, not too bad, or whatever like that? What does the scriptures, what does the teacher of his majesty say about them? It says that this is a deceiver and an antichrist. They are instead of Christ or they are against. They are anti or ante. You understand? They are, a, well, not ante. They would like to think that they are, um, you know, um, um, before Christ. You understand? And in fact, that's part of this, so it's anti, anti, and anti. So the three, um, look it up, look it up. But um, usually this is interpreted to be uh, in opposition to Christ. But also that word anti can be instead of. And you can also have like anti-bellum. You understand? Anti-bellum, if I'm um, correct, it means like it's antiquated. It's like it's like old. It's like previous. You know, some pages on the web are antiquarian. In that sense, they use it there too. Verse 8, it says, look to yourselves. Remember his majesty's teaching about where are we to turn to for answers to questions that have never been asked before. And how he says that we must first turn to the almighty God who has, who has um, created us in his image and raised us above the animals. Notice what he says. But there's an there's a anti-Christ philosophy that speaks about so-called evolution and has humanity in a devolution or the demonic revolution, the devolution. So it says that those who deny that Yeshua HaMoshiach is come in the flesh, you understand, is a deceiver and an antichrist. He says, look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, which we have done. So when we pointed out the particular roster in the court the scenario scene and everything, how he had waived his rights as a Rastafari, but he's standing there as a Rastafari first and foremostly, not like I'm just my own personal person doing my own thing. Well, then choose your own name. Don't choose our father's name. Don't choose this name. It's like right now if you call yourself something like McDonald's or something like that and you go around making another kind of hamburger, they'll sue you. They'll get they'll run you out of business. You, you see, because you are messing up in a sense their product and we are that which the Almighty has produced. You all right? That that which King Rastafari, you know and Nugusan the guest Kedamali Haila Shalase, Haila Salas the first has produced. So he says that so we have looked to ourselves and lose not those things which we have wrought, which we have done but that we receive, that we makebel, that we kabbalah, that we'll be able to kabbalah, take with the hand, kabbalah, to take with the hand, the hand in Hebrew is the yod, is the yod, right, to take with hand, right, a full reward. Now, when it says full reward, a lot of people will spiritualize it. It's not just talking about, um, it's not just speaking about just, um, just, um, spiritual, feel-good type of thing. It's also talking about if we can't protect our person, then how do we protect our property? You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, how do we protect our family, other persons who are connected? How do we protect our wealth? You understand? But the way it's set up right now, we have to feed others before we can feed ourselves because this is part of the mischief 
This is part of the mischief that has been framed by law, framed in legal context that people don't understand, and in their, their inertia and hoodwink and bamboozleism, many don't want to understand it. So for them, let that be, but not for I and I of His Majesty. So we want to receive a full reward. We don't want to be shortchanged or whatnot. You know, so we want to receive a full reward. You understand? You know, I mean, don't you want to get your full reward for what you have done? If you if you working, even nowadays people be working like um, 80 hours, get paid for maybe 70 something hours. Who knows? You understand? Maybe even less. Who knows? Verse nine and why? Who knows? Verse nine says, "Whosoever transgresses." Remember the idea of transgressing? It says in the in Torah, in the Belui Kidan, that anybody who is so bold to like go in the holy place, right? Um, like this a wander, I just want to see what's going on there. And, and they wander in the holy place, deserves death. It's worthy of death. It's just like right now, I can't just go to DC, Washington DC and just and just and just you know, wander around, I go to the White House, I just wander around the rooms or whatever like that. You think, you think it's going to be pleasant if you're going to smile and give me cake and stuff like that? No. I would have transgress or trespass. They'll say, you have trespass. You see? But see, now, under this law, see, in the Old Testament, there was at least a, a, a trespass offering. You know, for some things, if one did something innocently, it's trespass. Now it's up to the case law. It's up to what's in your file. You know, like if you have committed... Uh, a felony or something else, or if you even have a lot of misdemeanors, they could say all these misdemeanors basically make one felony. You know, they, they, they could play, and they often do. And this becomes a certain precedent. So when one of us does something, especially publicly, you know what I'm saying? Especially publicly, what we do in our private worship or our faith can affect everyone, all right? It can affect everyone. You understand, but firstly it affects us. Now, what we do out there in our representation, it affects our brothers, and, our brothers and sisters. But most of all, it affects our namesake. You understand? So, if we take His Majesty seriously as reality, then this should be very, very important. All right. So, whosoever transgresses, right, and abides not in the doctrine, the Tim Hevet of Christos of Moshiach right? The doctrine, the teaching of Messiah. What is the teaching of Christ? What is the teaching of Messiah? All right? I, I, I'll make it a little clear for you. COINTELPRO was to stop the rise of the black Messiah. So what is the teaching of the black Messiah? So whoever transgresses and, and abideth, abide means they don't dwell. They don't dwell in it. They don't live in it. So that, that now explains, most people say that Rastafari, right, is our liberty. Imagine you go into court right now and you say, I'm, I'm not removing my tan because uh, Rastafari is my liberty. Rastafari is my liberty. Okay, you, do you mean your, your liberty? You mean you're at liberty? You, no, 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 my, my liberty. Your honor, my liberty. Yes, I, my liberty. What do you think will happen? How, how will that work out? We don't know exactly how it will work out, but let's just use our God-given, our John-given imagination. How do you think that will work out? You think it will work out favorably? Because they can't even define li 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 liberty. And the problem is, if, if the word means so much to us or to you all or whoever, define it more. We use it so you know what we're talking about. But we like to prefer what ways of expression, especially in this language, See, that was a time when they spoke in Iric and Patois in Jamaica. And it was necessary, and it's still, in, it, we use it in a nostalgic sense. You see, we use that as that, part of Rastafari folklore and nostalgia. You understand? But the, but, but the spiritual and the governmental principles must be clear, must not get lost in translation. You understand? A lot of things have to get lost in translation. So Rastafari is Rastafari a religion. You know, it's Rastafari a religion. What does our head say? Mm -hmm. Not the tail, not the foot, not the arm, 
not some other part of our corporate entity. You know what I'm saying? As the body, as the body of Christ, as the true church. You know what I'm saying? As, as all of us together as the corporate body of Christ. All right? So the doctrine and the abiding, abiding means to dwell, means to live, to spend the night, to sojourn. That's, the, that's what the liberty is. That's, that's the liberty. Let me just show you another psalm right here within the available time that we have in this reasoning. And at this point, we wanted to touch on this particular point even before. But we hear a lot of stuff, but as we start to grow in the, in, in the teaching of His Majesty and in our Ethiopian culture, our divine heritage, we start to see a lot of points of, um, a lot of points of conflict, of contradiction. You understand? And either said that, well, either it means that His Majesty, right, His, His divine Majesty is wrong, or we who call ourselves Rastafari have not gotten something crucial, something very um, fundamental. We've gotten something, something wrong, and we need to make um, correction. We need to make a uh, correction about it. Now, in the Psalms, you'll find where where it speaks a lot, like like the 23rd Psalm, right? It says, "Dwell." You'll find where it says, "And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever." It's a sense of abiding. It's a sense of liberty. I will live within this sort of, I will live in this tabernacle, you understand, in Christ. This is the example of in the Old Testament. This will be like the so-called macro, the macro, right? And now in I and I, each of I and I, it will be the micro, the, the, the micro, you understand, know because when we sojourn, our body is like a tabernacle. It's like a tent, you understand, even the garment. It's like this certain type of garment for the holy place. You know what I'm saying? A certain kind of garment, and that touches on the, the whole clothing issues, too. Because a lot of our funding, a lot of our finances as a movement is lost. You understand? It's lost because we still are, we still are not living within the contract or the covenant. We're not living in our so-called liberty. You know what I'm saying? And our liberty because we have not received the guidance of His Majesty by the true, quote, religion or the hymenote, you understand, and the teaching of His Majesty, the B-I-B-L-E, all right, in our ancient Ethiopian culture. And the language is the key. He says that language is the key of culture and communication between man and man. This is why there's a lot of confusion amongst us, because we're wrestling with this Angleless or English or the Queen's English. You know what I'm saying? We're wrestling with the Queen's English and trying to chop out and coin words and all kind of crazy stuff and the next man don't know what you're talking about and, and, and how, how will we be able to do business? You know what I'm saying? How will we be able to use those God-given talents and gifts that we have unless we clear up that confusion? This is why this subject matter is, is fundamental, it's crucial. Uh, Psalm 15, Mesmura Dawit, um, 15, 1, 5. The Tehillim, a psalm of uh, David or Dawit, it says, Lord Adonai, Abertu, I father, his father, O father, O Abba of the house, who shall abide 